1853, almost 50 years before the Wright brothers' first motor-powered aeroplane, Sir George Cayley designed and tested a glider which provided the first flight that was capable of holding an adult human. It did crash after 900 feet, but it technically still counts. George Cayley was a pioneer in aerodynamics who had designed and tested a number of gliders during what I guess you could call the golden age of Victorian invention. An age in which you could happily strap yourself into your own inventions without anybody telling you that maybe it's a bad idea. But hold on a moment, Cayley might have been working within the Victorian tradition, but he certainly wasn't foolish enough to test his own glider. So he got his coachman to do it. Now, Cayley's coachman might have been described as reluctant to take the flight, but at least his feelings on the matter have been documented. This is in sharp contrast to the 10-year-old boy who Cayley strapped into an earlier 1849 glider, a glider which has subsequently become known as Cayley's Boy Carrier. Now today, of course, we have all sorts of codes and standards and laws that protect against this kind of behaviour, which means that if you do want to capture the spirit of putting Victorian children into experimental aircraft and then sending them out in search of fame and fortune, you're just going to have to play Celestia. Celestia is a two to six player game in which you get your very own Victorian-ish child and you'll put that child in your very own Victorian-ish experimental aircraft and then send the child out into the world in the hope that they come back with treasure and not crash. Now we're not completely irresponsible, this is the 21st century after all, so we will need not only parental supervision on this airship but also a pilot, a trained pilot who can fly it. Now, I don't know who these two other gentlemen are, but they look perfectly normal and I am in no way terrified of them whatsoever. So they're all going to get into the aircraft and go off on a voyage of discovery from floating city to floating city, searching for ever more valuable treasure until, frankly, they're probably going to crash. Um, but it's okay because in Celestia, if you do crash, you just go back to the start and start again. Victorian child. Victorian child gone. Yeah, anyway, as whimsical and light as this all is with your airship and your weird Victorian ish characters and your floating cities, there's actually a much easier way to explain Celestia. That's because, in principle, Celestia is actually just blackjack. Now that might not seem obvious at first. Blackjack is played with just a standard deck of playing cards where Celestia has this elaborate theme and all of this stuff. The objectives of the two games are different as well. Uh, in Blackjack the idea is just to get as close as you can to 21 without going bust. Whereas in Celestia the idea is just to be the first person to get 50 points worth of treasure. But if you strip Celestia down and remove all of this stuff then what you're left with is... Oh. Okay, what you're actually left with is this track of city tiles, which get more valuable the further you go, but also much more dangerous. So the game is in deciding at each step of the journey, do you want to stick with what you've got, or do you want to twist and push on, but with a higher chance of crashing? Celestia is going to be played over a number of rounds and each round is going to be another journey along this track. Now along the way, some people are going to be smart enough to get out of the airship. Some people though are going to push their luck a bit too far, crash and get nothing at all. Now if you do stop in Celestia, you get to, at the end of the round, take a treasure card from the deck next to the city at which you stopped. It'll have a value on it which will tell you how many points that treasure is worth. Keep it in your own little secret pile so nobody else can see it. Now, at the end of a round, if one or more people has 50 points or more, then the game is over. Whoever has the most points at that point wins the game. Back in the airship. 
If somehow you managed to have gotten your hands on an actual physical copy of Celestia and actual friends who aren't just digital replicas of their former selves, then you're going to need to set this game up. Fortunately, that turns out to be dead simple. So the first thing you're going to do is layer all of the city tiles in ascending order, starting with this rubbish number one tile and going all the way up to the really good number 25 tile. You'll also notice that each city has its own little deck of treasures, which you want to shuffle and then put next to the relevant deck. Uh, your airship just goes next to number one city and your dice, um, actually doesn't matter, dice can go wherever you want. Then everybody chooses one of these characters to be during the game. Now, quick note on these tokens, uh, as far as gameplay goes, they don't actually affect anything. All they do is show which colour you are. So whichever one you choose, just take the relevant coloured pawn and pop it in the airship. <laughs> That's good. The last thing you're going to do is take this big chunky deck of cards here, give it a good shuffle and then deal a starting hand to each player. Now with two to three players, everybody is going to get a starting hand of eight cards, but with four to six players, everybody will get a starting hand of six. There is one last thing that you need to do, which is to choose somebody, which is to choose somebody to be your starting player. That player gets to take their little playing piece and put them in the captain's chair at the back of the ship where they will very quickly realise that in Celestia the captain really does always go down with the ship. Um, quick interjection about player counts. Uh, you see we've tried it with two players and although the designers say you can play it with two players it doesn't work very well so we would recommend three at a minimum. Also, if you're going to play it online, the programmers behind Board Game Arena have decided that it doesn't even work with three. So if you are going to play it through Board Game Arena, you're going to need four at a minimum. Okay, back to the video. So the first thing you're going to do in Celestia is look at the next city on your journey, which at the beginning of the game, and indeed the beginning of every round, is going to be this city. So this number right here tells you roughly how much the treasure is worth at that location. The symbols on the other side are related to these dice. Now these four dice are all the same. You'll notice that two of the faces are blank. The other four faces have a symbol which corresponds to one of the four hazards you might encounter during the game. Now, this symbol here on the city tile shows you how many dice your captain needs to roll. Now you could get really lucky for example and just roll clear skies. More likely than not you will roll one or more hazards. So say for example you might encounter some lightning or you might encounter some lightning and fog or you might even just encounter two fogs. Whatever the captain rolls on the dice those are the hazards that they are going to have to overcome to get the airship safely to the next city. So once the captain's rolled the dice, each other player, excluding the captain, is going to make a decision. Starting with the player to the left of the captain and going clockwise around the table, everybody is going to decide do they want to stop and get out of the airship, or do they trust the captain to get them through the hazard safely to the next city? The answer to which, surprisingly often, is no. You'd actually be surprised by how often people just immediately get out of the aircraft. It's almost like they're all stood around and somebody goes, Hey, have you heard who's going to be captain today? And somebody else goes, No, but the weather looks decent, so that'll probably be fine. And then you turn around and you go, Hey guys, I'm your captain today. And then they all kind of just look at each other and then say, Yeah, I'll probably just stay here, thanks. Now, quick note, if you do decide to get out of the aircraft, then what you're essentially saying is that you are out of the rest of the round. You can't sit and wait for the airship to just silently pull up to this really, really good city at the end and then spring out of a box or a cupboard or something and go, surprise, I was actually here all the time. So once everybody's made their decision to either get off or stay on the aircraft, the captain is going to reveal whether they can overcome the hazards on the way. How do they do that? Well, that's where this hand of cards comes into play. For each symbol rolled on the dice, the captain needs a corresponding card from their hand with that same symbol. So if you roll fog and lightning, for example, the captain needs one fog card and one lightning card to overcome them. 
If the captain has the relevant cards, they reveal them to the table, discard them, and the airship moves on to the next city. Now, the captain's reward for getting everybody safely to the next destination? They're immediately removed from command. That's right, every time you reach a new city in Celestia, you rotate the captain seat clockwise to the next person still in the airship. So in this example, this player got out in the first city, which makes this player the new captain. They get to take their player piece, pop them in the captain's chair, look at the next city, roll the dice, etc, 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 just like you did before. And you'll keep doing that, moving up the track, rotating the captain seat until one of two things happens. The most common way a round of Celestia is going to end is if the airship crashes. And the airship will crash if the captain doesn't have the right cards. Let's imagine that you rolled two bird symbols on your dice, but your captain only has one bird card in hand. What that means is that instead of revealing any cards, not even any cards that the captain can play, the captain instead has to break the bad news that the airship is going to crash. But it is possible for the journey to finish peacefully if everybody gets out of the aircraft. Or if in some very rare cases somebody manages to actually pilot the airship all the way up to the last city. At which point they get to stop and go yay and everybody else down here goes Ugh. Now just one quick clarification because earlier I said that normally the captain doesn't get a choice to get off the airship. And that by and large is true. If you're the captain, then you have to fly the ship. You're not allowed to just get off and leave it to drift off towards the next city. There is one exception which occurs when you are the only player left in the airship as it arrives at a new city. Now by default, this makes you the captain again, and under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have the choice to leave. However, by virtue of being the only player left in the game, you actually do have a choice. So as you arrive at each city, and before you roll the dice, you get a choice. You can get out of the airship, call it quits and end the round, or you could push on just a little bit more. Fantastic idea with absolutely no drawbacks. So at the end of each round, a couple of things are gonna happen. First, anybody who was in the airship when it crashed gets nothing. Everybody else gets to pick up a card from the deck next to the city they stopped at and they'll look at how much it's worth and add it to their own little pile of treasure, keeping an eye on their points. Once you've done that, then you're just going to reset the game for a new round. That ship. So everybody goes back in the airship, the airship goes back to the first city, the captaincy rotates around the table to the next person, and then the very last thing you do before you start a new round is deal one new card to each player. And then you just carry on until somebody reaches 50 points. So that's almost everything you need to know. You see, in this deck are a few cards that I like to think of as the, wait, what did you just do? Cards. Cards which turn Celestia from a light, whimsical frolic into a tale of betrayal and deception. So here's a turbo card, and it's essentially a wild card. See, the symbol on the top means that as the captain, you can play a turbo card to overcome any one hazard of your choice. But the interesting thing about turbo cards is that unlike these normal boring cards, you don't actually have to play a turbo card if you don't want to. Why would you not want to play a turbo card? Well, so let's say it's the first turn of the first round of the game and you're the captain. And right off the bat, you've just rolled two pirates which is a problem because you only have one pirate card in your hand. You do have this turbo card though, which means you could play this to negate the second pirate dice. But do you really want to do that? Do you really want to waste that turbo card in the first round of the game just to get these fools to the second city? No. What you want to do is let the aircraft crash, go back to the start, and let somebody do all the hard work for you, saving your turbo card until it's really, really valuable. You can use an alternative route card if you're the captain or a passenger and only after everybody has decided if they're going to stay in or get out of the aircraft. Playing one of these cards lets the captain re-roll any number of dice of their choice. So imagine you're the captain and everybody decides to get out of the airship 
because they don't think you've got the cards to deal with these three pirate dice. And they're right, but what you do have is an alternative root card, which you play, letting you re-roll all three of these dice. And by some bizarre miracle, you re-roll the dice and they all come up blank, letting you happily move on for free to the next city, feeling pretty smug for yourself. Of course, what normally happens is that you reroll all three of the dice and you find that your alternative route past the pirates leads to pirates. Is there somebody on your airship you don't like? Somebody you maybe don't trust? Somebody who's maybe a bit too close to winning and who you would like to remove from the airship? Well, with this card, you actually can. You can play an eject card if you are still in the airship and after everybody has decided if they're going to stay on or get off. What it does is let you choose one of the player, not the captain though, but one of the passenger on the ship and you essentially force that passenger to leave, leaving you to sail off to your next destination until the captain announces that you're about to crash. This wind gust card might be the meanest card in the game because you don't actually have to be a passenger on the airship to use it. All you need to do is wait until all of the players have decided if they're going to stay in or get out of the airship and then you play it to make the captain re-roll any blank dice. That means these guys here who just rolled three blank dice and think they're in for a nice calm ride are actually in for a big surprise. The Magic Spyglass isn't a card in this deck here, rather if you're lucky you'll find it in one of the decks next to the first four cities. Nope. Next to the first four cities. They look like that. Magic Spyglasses are treasure and they are worth two points, but that's not very much on its own. They actually have much more value elsewhere. Now after everybody's made their decision about staying on the aircraft as normal, you can actually discard and forfeit this card. Doing so lets you immediately ignore all of the dice rolled, moving your airship on to the next city as if you'd rolled all blanks. It's kind of like the Wind Gust card in reverse. And that's Celestia, a game which for obvious reasons you might struggle to play in real life at the minute until your local library reopens and you can borrow it. But in the meantime, feel free to head over to Board Game Arena, uh, the link will probably be somewhere down there, set up a free account and check it out.